Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God. Welcome to all of you this morning. Uh, you that are here on Facebook, praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You that are online, I'm seeing you already. God bless you, Beatrice, Beverly, praise God, Mary, Shannon, Virginia. God bless you all. And then you that are coming on uh, Facebook, Doris. Demita, Angel, praise God, Montoya, mm -hmm. Sabrina, God bless all of you, praise God, for coming on this morning. You know, uh, uh, this is the day the Lord has made. God bless your angel. I see you also. Teresa, praise God. You know, uh, the good thing about it is that God has provided a way whereby we can all come together in faith, in love, and, uh, uh, you know, commune, fellowship one with another in the morning. We get a chance to hear the living word of God. You know, thank God for the opportunity he's given me to be a blessing to your life. And I just believe God with all of my heart that this time that we have together is ordained by God every morning. Uh, if you're here for the very first time, welcome. My name is Dr. Alfred Craig. This is called Daily Bread, praise God. Well, we expect God to give us fresh wisdom, fresh bread from heaven every morning, praise God. God bless you, Maria. Uh, Demita, God bless you all. Ebony, God bless you. Welcome this morning to what God has planned today, praise God. You know, every day we get up in the morning, God always has a precious plan for our lives. And he says, I know the thoughts that I have for you, and they are good and not evil to give you an expected end. Means that God puts his thoughts in our minds so that we can speak those thoughts, that we can act on those thoughts, and that we can um, move toward those thoughts in our daily lives and our actions. And so today, I uh, just want to get our day started off good. Praise God. God bless you uh, and, and the thing that he has for your life. I'm telling you, it is good. Now, you may have been prophesied to by other people that your life is not going to amount to anything, that, that, you, that you're headed for disaster. You know what I mean? Because you look at your checkbook, I'm headed for disaster. You look at your finances, I'm headed for disaster. You look at your health and your body, I'm headed for disaster. But no, 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 no. Don't come into agreement with that. Bible said life and death is in the power of your tongue. And, and we, we can bless our life or we can curse our life by words come out of our mouth. And even though thoughts are there, even though negative situations surround us, but we have to make the decision that God says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. And then he says, choose. He says, choose. He said, you know, you choose. And uh, Proverbs 6, 2 says, you're snared by the words of your mouth. So you're not snared by what other people say about you. You're snared by what you say about you. Glory to God. And you can come into agreement. Amen. With what God's word declares. And God's word will prevail over any other prophecy that is happening in your life. Glory to God. Your body may be prophesying to you this morning. Your, your wallet may be prophesying to you this morning. Other people's words may be prophesying. But let me tell you something. The only thing that really holds value in your life is the words that you say. Your words have more power than anyone else's words. And so as we start today off, I'm going to be talking to you today about speaking to your mountains, speaking to your problems, amen, and understanding that your words have power, amen. Your words carry power in the spirit world, and your words change things in the physical realm. And I want you to know that today, and we're going to focus on that today, praise God. So again, God bless you today. Let's have a good word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you today. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have woke us up this morning. You have clothed us in our right mind, Father. I thank you, God, for every person that's listened to my voice this morning, that, God, you give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding this morning, that we may know the hope of your calling, that we may know the riches of your glory, and may know what is that exceeding greatness of your power that is to us as believers. Father, I thank you that you, this day, have granted us an Ephesians 3.20 life. That you are at work right now, Father, working in us, doing exceeding, abundantly, and above all we can ask or think according to your power that's at work inside of us. So, Father, we thank you for that right now. In the mighty and majestic name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen 
and amen. Well, you ready to get started? This is my God bless you. Vera, I see you've come on also this morning. God bless you today. Well, let's talk today about daily bread. Let's talk about, you know, uh, about moving mountains. You know, that's our bread for today. That God says in his word, if you have, if, for you that are on Facebook, if you have your Bibles, you can open them with me to the book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse number 20. Matthew 17, 20. And we're going to start right there this morning as far as our scripture reading, okay? And we're going to see that even Jesus Christ himself declared that our lives, our situations, our circumstances can be changed by the words that come out of our lips, okay? Now, uh, uh, Jesus had just come uh, 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 to this individual who had brought his son to the disciples and they could not cast the devil out. And the disciples began to ask Jesus, you know, because we, we've experienced things in the past. They began to ask Jesus, well, why could not we cast this thing out? And, you know, in other words, what is hindering our productivity? What's, what's keeping us from being a house success the way you just had success? We tried to cast the devil out. He didn't go out. You cast him out. He went out. What difference did it make? And Jesus is going to point to them an exact thing that's, that caused their lack of success in, in dealing with demonic forces, whether it be sickness, disease, whatever. Look what Jesus said. And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say. Notice it didn't say you shall think. Notice it didn't say that you shall talk about the problem. It said, you shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing, glory to God, shall be impossible unto you. So Jesus is saying that the thing that determined your, what's possible for you or what's impossible is not necessarily God's will in that area. But it's based upon the, your faith and speaking to the situation, not talking about it. You know, sometimes our, our faith is at a level where we, we go around telling everybody else our problems. How sick we are. How much pain we're in. On how things are not working out for us. And I know I, I just knew things would get worse. And so that right there uh, just gives Satan more tools to bring those things to pass in our lives. But Jesus said here, it's our unbelief. It is our talking negative. It is our talking about the problem instead of talking to the problem. He said, if you have faith, and the Bible says in Romans chapter number 10, uh, 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 Romans 12, and then verse 3, it says, God has already dealt to every one of us the measure of faith. So we do have faith. But it depends on what you've done with your faith. Are you, are you, are you, are you have faith in your problem? Or you have faith in the word of God. So where is your faith at? Because doubt is, doubt is faith. But doubt is faith that's adverse to the will of God. So he said, but if you have faith in God, then you can speak to your mountains. In other words, God said, I've given you that level of authority on the earth. That your words carry authority in the earth. And, and all the elements of the earth are subject to your words. So if you can speak to the mountain and say, remove, bills be removed, <laughs> glory to God. Sickness and disease, cancer, you leave my body. Diabetes, high blood pressure, you go down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, if you'll speak to that mountain in your life, that thing that's talking to you, that thing that's telling you that, you're, that your future is impossible, you can speak to that thing. And say, no, you be removed. And you be cast in the midst of the sea. And here he says, nothing, nothing shall be impossible unto you. So, what's possible for you and me is, the, is, is, is what we're willing to be bold enough to speak. Things that are in line with the revealed will of God. If we're bold enough to speak it, God says, I'll turn any impossible situation that you're facing in your life around. Glory to God. But don't talk to God about how big your problem is. Talk to your problem 
about how big your God is. Glory to, can you see that this morning? Now, uh, uh, the, the next verse, I'm going to get to in a few minutes, but recognize this, your words are creative. You know, when, when the earth, in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse number 1 and 2, God says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was not form and void. Dark is upon the face of the deep. Verse 2, the Bible says, and, God, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So we can see that when God comes across chaos and things that are out of order, the way he brings it back into order is using the creative power of words. God didn't just start complaining about, I don't know why the world is like this. I don't know. I created it good. I don't know why it's going on. Why this? Why the, the earth is full of water? How, how did all this voidness come in? No, God just starts saying, let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. And, and, and because God's words were creative. And Jesus is telling us the same thing back in Matthew. We just talked about that your words also are creative. Because you and I are created in God's image, in his likeness. And he gave us dominion. So you got to recognize this, that your words are creative. Now, uh, uh, you may have heard the, the saying years ago that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never move me. No, words will move. <laughs> Amen. Words can move mountains. Words can change your life. Your words, your words become your reality. You got that? And so you've got to change your reality by changing the words that's coming out of your mouth. And continue to speak those things in the face of contradictory circumstances. Can you see that this morning? Now notice the book of Hebrews in chapter number 11, verse number 3. We can see that Paul kind of reiterated a little bit what, what God said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 3 makes this statement. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. So Paul is saying here, repeating what God said in Genesis, that the whole, all the worlds, all the stars that God flung into the, in, into the air, God said, let the feminine appear. God spoke and said, let the dry land appear. God spoke the stars, the planets, to come into being. All of that was framed by the word of God. Genesis chapter 1 constant, and God said, let this happen. And God said, let the, let, you know, let the, this, let the waters you know, settle. God said, let the earth be filled with fish. And God just kept speaking what he wanted to see. So God framed his world with the words. Can I say this today? Also, your world and my world has been also framed by the words that have been coming out of our mouths. I think I like what uh, years ago, Joel Osteen's dad had a book out called, You've Been Hung by Your Tongue. <laughs> There's a miracle in your mouth. Are you following me? So we got to recognize that it, it says here in Hebrews, everything that we see was not made by things that appeared, but it was made by the creative power of words. Your future is bright. No weapon formed against you can prosper. But you got to get those words in your mouth. That instead of looking at things getting worse and worse and worse, you got to begin to start confessing. Know the path of the just is as a bright shining light that grows brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. You got to begin to start saying, by Jesus Christ, I am healed. Even though sickness and disease has tried to attack my body. You got to continue to say, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, even though your checkbook is prophesying to you bankruptcy, financial failure. You got in the midst of your circumstances, you got to learn how to speak to your mountain and say, mountain, be moved in Jesus' name. Glory, can you receive that this morning? Now, so the whole goal is this. Stop talking about your mountain, the problem, and start talking to your mountain. You got that? Stop talking about your mountain 
and start talking to your mountain. Because sometimes we just kind of go from one person to the next, telling them about the mountain that we're facing. Now, there's nothing wrong with having some counseling. If you feel like you need to talk to someone, I'm going to talk about that. You know, that's, you know, but, but do that to one person that, 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 that'll give you a solution and then get back into talking confession. Because there's nothing wrong with, you know, having someone to talk to and, and opening up to people. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't do that to everybody you see. Do it to your pastor. Do it to a trusted friend. Or you follow me. And release all the things that's in you in that area. But after you do that, get back into confession. Because that person needs to give you some, some solutions to it. Where you can begin to confess the word of God over your situation. Are you following them today? So you, you don't want to continue to go from one person to the next person talking about how bad things are, about how you're failing, your business is failing, your marriage is failing, your kids is on drugs, ain't nothing going to see. You can't go around talking that every day and expect things to change. You got that this morning? Now, I know years ago, I, 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 I've been hurt, you know, and, and uh, I've been hurt so many times by different people. Over the, I've been doing this, I've been doing the ministry for 40 years. I was in business for 20 years, ministry for 40 years. And, you know, through the years, you know, you get hurt by different individuals. And, you know, uh, you know, because you're human, you get hurt. And for a long time, you know, I carried a lot of that pain. You know, you'll find me in, in those areas. And sometimes I find myself, you know, I talking to it, talking about it to other people. And, and I, but I found every time I would talk about it to other people, it just, you know, it, uh, it just hurt me even worse because it just opened that thing back up again. It was almost like I was wanting somebody else to hate them too, you know what I mean, because they hurt me, are you follow me? But I had to get rid of that because you know what pain is? You know what unforgiveness is? Unforgiveness and talking about it is like, you know, a drinking poison and expecting someone else to die from it. In other words, you're carrying that poison around in you. You're speaking all that negativity in your life. And you're expecting it to change something. It does not change anything. You got that? So you got to go ahead and stop talking about that thing. You know, what they did is over. You got that. You can't change them. You cannot control how people think about you and what they say about you and what they do to you. But you can change your response to that. You got that? When they, when I like what Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we just go high. When, when they talk negative, we talk positive. When they say you're not going to make it, we say we're going to make it. When they say we're going to fail, we say no weapon formed against me is going to prosper. Every tongue rise against me is going to be condemned. I prosper in the city. I prosper in the field. I'm blessed going in. I'm blessed going out. you got to begin to respond back to those things that people are saying, people are doing to you with the word of God and begin to speak your, uh, a new reality into your life. Don't live under the shadow of your past. Don't live under the shadow of your pain. Yes, it hurts when people hurt you. Yes, it does. Yes, it's discouraging when things didn't go right. Yes, it's discouraging. Yes, it's discouraging when your finances are looking terrible. But what's even more discouraging is when you keep talking about it. No, you begin to start saying, I'm coming out in Jesus' name. Glory to God. The blessings in the, uh, of God are on my life. God's favor is on my life. Glory to God. And my set time of favor has come. Glory to God. I am highly favored. I'm victorious. I'm more than a conqueror. Glory to God. Because I belong to God. You got to come out of that shell, out of that depression, and begin to start speaking faith back into your life again. Begin to speak victory back in your life again. Now, notice what Jesus did. He, he looked at something that was, in, uh, 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 that, was, uh, that was not productive. This was in the book of Mark chapter number 11 and verse number 12. Mark chapter 11 and verse number 12. You have your Bibles open. And Jesus came to this fig tree that was unproductive. Now he could have started talking about the fig tree, about how unproductive it was and why it should not have been, uh, should have been productive. He, should have tried to, he could have tried to dissect the possibility of how he can make the tree more productive. But look what Jesus did. Mark chapter 11 verse 12 says, And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon, and he came, to, and when he came to it, he was expecting something on it, because it had leaves. He found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs were not yet. So what Jesus is saying, this tree was appearing to be something that it wasn't. <laughs> Are you following? He was hungry, 
So he went expecting something from that treatment. And we do the same thing with people. We, we expect certain relationships to work out. We expect certain jobs to work out. We expect certain things to happen in our lives. But it does not happen like we want it to. Are you following me? It was leaves. It appeared to have fruit. But when I got close to it, it didn't have anything. And that's how relationships are sometimes. They appear to be positive, but they end up being negative. That's how jobs be sometimes. It appeared to be a career, but it ended up being a, a, a three months, you know, temporary position. But what do you do when that happens? Look what Jesus said. And Jesus answered, and in verse 14, Jesus answered and said to it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter and forever. And his disciples said, what, what is Jesus doing? Jesus is saying, I'm not, I'm not going to allow what I see right now to stay before me. I'm going to deal with this situation and remove it totally out of my way. Amen. You got to learn how to cut off things in your life that are unproductive. Are you following? If there's people in your life that are unproductive, that, that your relationship with them is doing you more harm than good. They, every time you come around, they're talking negative. You got to cut those things off. Jesus said, look. I'm cutting this thing off. This thing is unproductive. It appeared to be productive, but it's not. So I'm dealing with this thing right now in my life. Glory to God. Are you following me? You may have a business that just, you, you, you in business, you got, you got business cards and everything, but it just ain't working. You may just be in the wrong business. It may just get you, get you another business, one that's going to work out better. Cut that thing off. And, and are you following me? In other words, you got to learn how, when, how to speak back to situations and not, see, Jiva said, tree, you are not going to be hanging around with me. You're unproductive. You're appearing to be something you're not. So I'm saying from now on, no man, not just, oh, not only me, but no man going to eat fruit of you here in the afternoon forever because you're appearing to be something that you're not. And he spoke to that mountain. You got to speak and say, you know what? Those friends I had, I love them. I, I, I trusted them. They left me. But, I'm, but right now, I'm, I'm getting those people totally out of my life. Hallelujah. You get them saying today? And I'm, 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 God's got new friends waiting on me. If you might have had a husband that, that broke off from you, a wife that broke off from you, that's all right. You know, let that thing go and say, God, thank you for new, a new wife. Thank you for a new husband. Thank you for someone going to treat me right. Someone's going to love me and I can, someone I can love. You got to speak back to that thing. Stop letting that hurt and that pain talk to you. <laughs> Can you receive that this morning? Now, uh, 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 notice what happens in verse number 20. And in the morning, as they passed by it, they saw the fig tree dried up up from the roots. No, they, they, they heard Jesus speak to it. Now the next day they're seeing Jesus, this thing really worked. You spoke the same way God spoke in Genesis. You spoke to this tree, and exactly what you said to it happened. Verse 21 says, And Peter calling to remember said unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which you cursed is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. I learned that. Your faith is no greater than the person you have it in. Jesus' faith was in that tree at first. He came expecting something to own that tree. But when he, when he went to the tree, he found the tree was just, you know, faking out. It, you know, the tree was supposed to have some fruit, but it wasn't right. So Jesus is saying, you know what? Don't put your faith in people. Because your faith is only as strong as that person is. If that person weakens out in a situation, then that will cause your faith to go up and down. But have your faith in God. How do they, people, God will bring people into your life. He'll bring good people into your life. And he'll do that all the time. People that you can trust. But even people that you can trust, still trust God that he's going to bring, bring them into your life. Don't put your confidence in people. You can hurt every time. Now, Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, another, another, another word says, another tradition says, have the faith of God. And another tradition says, have the God. Another tradition says, have the God kind of faith. Have the God kind of faith. 
And what kind of faith is that? Jesus is going to explain to them the secret. The secret of turning things around your life. The things, the secret of turning unproductive productivity into productivity. The secret of things speaking to you and you talking back to it. Jesus, as I said, it happens by having faith in God. Having the God kind of faith. And then he explains what, what that is. Is that right? Verse 23, he said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, the same way I spoke to the fig tree, you can speak to your mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, this is what he says, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, not what other people say, not what your teacher told you years ago, you're not going to be anything, not what your ex-husband said about you, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. So Jesus' illustration with that trick fig tree was, was an illustration of how we need to respond. That when your mountain is talking to you, when bills are talking to you, when sickness and disease is talking to you, when negativity from people are coming at you, whether it's on your job, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your church, in your community, you learn to speak and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. And I'm declaring this mountain of strife is removed. This, this unforgiveness in my heart, this pain is removed in Jesus' name. My finances are, are great. I'm blessed. All my needs are met. Uh, my health is, is restored unto me. Uh, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm going forward and not backwards. I'm going up and not down. Glory to God. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Kind of like David did. When Goliath came to him and said, uh, uh, David, you, uh, you know, who are you, little, little runny thing? You let number little runt. I'm going to kill you. David spoke back to him and said, no, you're not. I killed the bear. I killed the lion. And I can do you the same way. And the Bible says David didn't even, didn't even stop to think about that thing. He ran toward the giant, got him five rocks, praise God, and with his slingshot. And God put his power on that slingshot and killed that giant. Because David said, he prophesied. He said, no, this day. You come to me with a sword and with a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. And this day, I will cut your head off in Jesus' name. David responded with words. The giant spoke to him, I'm going to kill you. But David spoke back to his giant and he prophesied and God brought it to pass. So I want to encourage you today, speak to your mountain. Command your body to be healed. You say, but Pastor, whatever gets worse, you keep speaking the word of God. God will honor your words. Believe me, God will honor your words. Psalms 107 says he sent his word and healed them. And so when you speak your word, your words have created power that actually change physical things. So I'm going to encourage you to do like David did. And the Bible said when David ran toward his giant, the scripture says that, that Goliath went down. And that's what happened in your life today. Well, this has been a great blessing today. Speaking to your mountain, not about your mountain, but speaking to it. And I'm declaring that every mountain in your life has gone down in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I want to encourage you today uh, to share this with your friends, you know, uh, on Facebook. Share this. Make sure you, 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 you share it because it's so important that other people hear the same word. It's spreading every day. More people are coming on. Glory to God. So make sure you share it. Like it. And also, give me your comments. I love your comments as you talk to me and things like that. I appreciate your comments and things like that. And then also, you know, again, I'm in full-time ministry. This is what I do for a living. I speak and I encourage people like yourself. If you want to be a part of supporting the ministry, sowing into this, if this has been a blessing to your life, one of the things God says, you know, he says, bring the tithe and offerings to the storehouse. And so if, if you desire to you know, partner with me in this and sow a good seed, and, and you don't just, it's not paying a debt because this is free. 
but it's really sowing a seed. And God said, what you reap, you sow, you're going to reap. God's favor and blessing will come on your life as you support what he's doing in, in, in people's lives. So if this is a blessing to you, I want you to partner with me. And I set myself in agreement with you that every seed that you sow will come back to you in abundance in Jesus' name. All you got to do is go to PayPal. Dot com. Uh, if you look on the on, on, on the screen there, I, I wrote out uh, uh, the uh, my, the email. When you go to PayPal and, and you put the amount of money you, that God leads you to do, and you send it to I am church at gmail dot com. Oh, I'm sorry, I am church fifty four at gmail dot com. That's I am church fifty four at gmail dot com. And I, I set myself an agreement for the financial blessing and favor of God on your life. Well, this has been a great day for you. Uh, this is Dr. Craig. I'm excited about you speaking to your mountains. We'll be back again tomorrow morning at the exact same time. Until then, may God's riches and his very best be yours. See you tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye now.